Hello everyone and welcome to episode 74 of Bucks UK TV. Uh, I am joined by uh, stalwarts Phil and Mariana and by our longtime Bucks UK member Dan. Welcome back. Good evening. How are we doing, Karen? You all right? Good, thank you. Phil, looking ahead to the Chiefs, um, the weather's looking a bit blowy over there, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, I just want to say before we start uh, dissecting what happened between the Packers and the uh, Bucks last Sunday, I just want to say on behalf of uh, the Bucks UK and uh, all the members, uh, we'd just like to say that our thoughts and prayers go out to everybody out there in Tampa that's going to be affected by the imminent arrival of Hurricane Ian. You know, you are, we were all thinking about you and stay safe, everyone. Absolutely. Stay mm. safe. Um, speaking of safe, that's a good opportunity to start talking about the Bucks. Mariana, that performance was far from safe. What were, what were your reactions by the time you, you, the, the uh, adrenaline had died down? It was just a long night. It was it was back to the uh, back to the bad old books. I felt like it it just seemed to well. It, it looked like it was going to run away in that in that first half, and fortunately we seemed to like lock it down. But then we just couldn't do anything after that. We couldn't move the ball at all. So, and then just as you think, well, that's it over. Then they come back and give you that faint bit of hope just to just to make you live through the final. <laughs> like seconds of the closing um seconds of the game so yeah it was it was a whole roller coaster of emotion for basically a, an absolute disappointment at the end Dan would you agree with that I'm guessing you had a full head of hair at kickoff <laughs> yeah I had a full head of hair for a very long time um <laughs> but uh yeah it started out pessimistic I guess but I'm not as down on the performance and the result as always we've constantly struggled on defense early in games it took me a long way back to, to Brady's first year here in the Super Bowl win we had. How we looked very cagey early on in games. We were very soft in defense a lot of times. Um, but we made the adjustments and, and stepped up the performance from there. I never felt as bad as we were that first quarter that we was ever out of that game. We never looked like getting in it, but we wasn't totally out of it either. Um, and when you have the players that like Brady, you've always got a chance. And that proved to be the case almost. Yeah, as I say, it's the hope that kills you. Phil, let's start on the offensive side then. And as Dan mentioned, Brady, let's stick with that. Obviously, we know you're a big fan. What, oh, what yeah. kind of report card do you give Brady for, for Sunday? Well, I I don't put much blame at his door, be quite honest. You know, I mean, one thing that kept striking me all the way through the game is, you know, we beat the Saints the, uh, the previous Sunday and we're all high-fiving and all happy and good old Mike Evans and, you know, we're all sort of... And I can't help but thinking if Mike hadn't have pushed Lattimore and he hadn't have got suspended, we would be talking about our third victory in a row. That's what I think. I think that uh, I don't put any blame on Brady at all. The number of drops by Perriman and Gage and Scotty Miller. You know, it was, it was, it was, oh dear, it was terrible. And the other thing is the offensive line. So many injuries. Uh, he got the ball away quite quick, but just wasn't, just wasn't quick enough. But no idea. It was like watching the bad old books when Jameis was at the helm, I'm afraid. It was not good. Dan, you agree with that? Was it the receivers where we ought to be uh, pinning <coughs> the, the fault? Yeah, in part. I mean, we're dealing with second-string receivers here, mm. so it's always going to be a struggle. Um, I don't lay any blame at Brady's door. I think with what he had to work with, he did what he could. The offensive line's been a mess all season. Um, There's still in that bedding-in period from the injuries we've had and Donovan Smith being out, so that's going to take time. Um, I tell you what, both teams, because they lost Jair and Alexander as well in the game. So you put both teams fully healthy and run that game again, we win that game 19 times out of 20. Mm -hmm. I haven't got much doubt. And that's what I say. Although we've lost, I've come out of it feeling okay. Because actually, if they're considered to be one of the best in the NFC, they haven't really troubled us very much, particularly. No. Once we've bedded in and settled down, we was okay. There was quite a few things I was quite worried about as well. Like, again, we, you know, we've... Uh... You know, everybody was high fiving as well. We got Julio Jones. What a what a good player he was, and uh, yeah, and good player he was. <laughs> and, and I was just wondering when we signed him, I thought, well, which one we're going to get? The one that's like plays one treatment room for four, 
and it looks like looks looks very much like that's what we've got, and it's uh, that's a bit disconcerting for the rest of the season. What about and, Russell Gage though? I thought Russell Gage had a good game. Yeah, he'd, well, he, he dropped one, didn't he? Another one, he hmm. he just you put it like this: if Evans has been playing, there'd have been two people on Evans in their secondary, and there'd, everybody have had more time, and and uh, yeah, Gage did all right, but. The, like it's like Dan said, this the second string receiver is not the uh, front line. And Gage is still playing banged up as well. To be fair to him, yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, he was. So you know, it was and, a fair uh, effort on that account. I mean, it's a good point you talk about that. Yeah, what what if Evans is there and what the adjustments are? The adjustments that I think you know, arguably the Packers were probably crowding the box a little bit and knowing that. I mean, as, as the commentators were saying, we definitely got a commitment to the run. Um, Mariana, your hero, Lenny. Uh, it doesn't seem like we've got any other running backs on the roster at this point, does it? I think I saw the stats and what was it? He played 91% of the snaps. Like, absolutely crazy for for, a, for keeping a running back healthy as well. You, you kind of want to see us, you know, switching it up. Um, I don't know what, like, the other guys have done wrong. Um, as far as I know, Rashad White is healthy. He played a couple of snaps, but it was literally just a couple. So it's a, it's a bit odd to, to sort of play Lenny. At, you know, I, I want to see Lenny healthy for the season, and I just worry that the, the amount we're putting on him is, uh, is going to wear him down. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cause an injury. I mean, he was already sort of talking about a slightly tweaked hamstring. But for, for all the, the running he did, he still got, you know, a few yards off some successful runs in there. But as we always say, it's, it's always straight up the gut, straight up the gut, straight up the gut. You know, there's the, it seems to be very little, you know, in the way of, oh, let's run it to the edge or let's, you know, let's do something a bit different. And the only time we did try a trick play, we, um, <laughs> it didn't go quite as well as we would have oh, on the forum. We were all hollering for a trick play on the forum. Like, that was a great time. And then we did it. We went, no, oh, stop. Don't do that again. <laughs> Good point though, Dan. I mean, what do you, we, we often hear from Marianne about the play calling and that's a bit, but obviously you're, you're a, a less frequent appearance. So um, yes, sir. kind of, Byron, is, is he this genius or from this high scoring offense of last year or are we, you know, is it two touchdowns we've got so far? You know, or three? It's not, it's not great. We feel very it? predictable, especially on early downs. Uh, mm. It is a, a straight run up the gut all the time. Um, I think it's designed that way. I think it's led his strength. I don't think he does beat a lot of defenders around the corner. So I do fine, use him. All we're actually trying to do, I think, is get him to second and short, third and short passing down situations. If we can get to a, a second, three, second, and four, that's Brady's opportunity to almost have a free shot. And then you're on the third down, you can pick up the first and move it forward again. So I think we're looking at trying to pick up five, six, seven yards on that first down to, to buy ourselves a free play with the mm. second down each time. So I guess the question mark is, is are we going to get five or six yards up the gut? Well, no, I don't no. think any NFL team coming. reliably runs that dive up the gut and gets five or six yards. On a One regular of the basis. they None. often say is mm. uh, about staying true to the run, though, and you know, keeping a balance. You know, just because the run isn't working sometimes doesn't mean you should just go away from it and turn into like a free for all. Brady's going to throw 50 odd passes. You're not going to get, you know, because they know what's ago. coming then. So you've got to, you've got mm. to mix it up with some run. But I would like to see, you know, I would like to see maybe Richard White, maybe, you know, going to the edge or something or just something a bit different, you know, I think or about the touchdown a few more jet sweeps. Lenny's touchdown from the Super Bowl, where it was sort of going to the tackle. I wouldn't call it off tackle because he bounced it outside, but something that was had the sort of as was the edge of the box, you know, or, and with the option to spring it outside depending on what the blocking is doing. We tried a screen pass early on, and it, clearly it didn't work, and we never went back to it again. But it felt like a screen pass is, is a run play you know, in disguise, isn't it? Really, um, it feels like there's just there's got to be other options because I completely agree with you, Dad. I think on the downs where it was second or third and three, the, the Brady had all day back there in a way that he didn't on third and seven. Mm -hmm. So that, that I think that's a huge difference maker. Yeah, because third and seven is a designated pass play. You have mm. to pass on third and seven. You're not going to run it. So they're going to send everybody. You have to back out. And that's when you won't see Richard White, Keyshawn Vaughn, because the pass blocking from them guys isn't on a par with Lenny. Uh, and that's why he then picks up the third down work as well. So uh, that it seemed to be that when um, Rogers was uh, doing his third down, he was three and four or three and three. 
but we were like three and 12 or three and eight, you know, we've become very, very predictable these days. And um, it was, it was a bit of a horror show, to be quite honest. But, yeah, Before was, we come on to talk about the defense, though, because that's a good segue, but I just want to talk <laughs> briefly about the tight ends, because it felt like Cambrake was out there a bit more. Rudolph, the red nosed tight end, got, got a bit of a showing, um, and Otten and the other one was, was blocking. Um, yeah, I think Otten was out, least. wasn't he? And I think we missed him, actually, because mm. uh, I think he was a, a pre-game like, listed as an injury, but I, I think we missed him. Coach he lost Heath his mum in the week. Superb, I think. He lost his mum in the week. Uh, oh, all right. Um, Coach Heath has been, I think, superb playing in the sort of fullback role more than a tight end role. He, he, I, I've noticed a few times now with Coach Heath that if he does that sort of lead fullback role, and has Lenny follow him through. Lenny's broken off a couple of runs. Some of his more su- sort of successful ones have been running behind Keith. So I do actually really like how we're using him. Um, definitely much more as a sort of lead blocker in that sort of fullback role. Um, it was dis- I think it was just a bit disappointing to see Cam Bray, like who's normally such safe hands, not mm. not sort of catch. He he dropped one, which is like almost unheard of for him. Yeah, it's, we, we, I don't want to say this. But it's been said a hundred times before. But, oh God, we don't. We just miss Gronk. And if, if you're watching this Gronk, just have a rethink, please. You know, because I, Cameron Bright has had the chance to shine this season, and he hasn't convinced me at all. Not, not at all. He's you know he's, he's ready to step up. We're yeah, definitely lacking. And um, as you say, you say the other two tight ends have done very well, but. All they are, all they become is like additions to our offensive line and uh, to give Brady time to throw it. And um, it's uh, a bit, bit disconcerting at the tight end, I think, as a moment in time. Mm. Because on that, on the the, uh, the final play of the touchdown, we had the, the three tight ends in on the end of the line on both the touchdown and the two point yeah. conversion initially. So they went heavy set on both of those plays. Yeah. It's. Uh, you know, it's, the whole thing was just a bit, bit, bit strange. I'll be quite, I'll be quite honest. It was, and then the uh, final part, then Dan, as you mentioned, that, 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 that towards the end of the game, the two-point conversion. What happened? <laughs> Who knows? There's talk of the clock hurrying out, but I think everyone knows. From what it looks like, it looks like we had a pass play lined up, <clears throat> and then it looks like Brady calls an ball to do a run play because they shift the man across. The linebacker comes across to run that ball. And ultimately, that's what we do. I actually think because of the receivers we had and the way we were, nobody quite understood maybe the ball properly or understood where it was. And it wasn't set in time. And we missed the opportunity. And you see it as it started. It looks pretty convincing. Lenny walks that ball. He walks in almost untouched if that play goes through. Um, but I definitely think it was set up as a, as a, a pass play. And he brings them out across, he gets right, and then he switches it up. Interesting. And obviously, five yards back, the percentages aren't good, are they? You have to aim for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think Lenny, Lenny, Lenny was definitely going to walk that in, as you say. Look, he, he had a free walk in, but uh, as soon as you're, you're five yards back, that just changes that completely. So. I do think though it's only it's only a hiccup though it's a blip. Brady will get this right. We we had this at the start of last season as well. You know we were all sitting there wondering about how who was going to play in the secondary. I think it was last year. We had so many injuries mm-hmm. there, but these you know these players are going to come back. The one that concerns me is Godwin more than anybody else. He seems mm-hmm. to. I get the impression he's come back a little bit too early, and uh, he didn't look right in the first game and. It's it's uh, a bit disconcerting at wide receiver, you know, all that talent, but all those injuries, you know. I will say, you know, like just to sort of finish on a positive, there were a couple of positives. One thing was Brady seeing him on the sidelines doing his usual sort of turning into the sort of super captain Tom, which I, I always like to see him in that mode rather than throwing the tablet around. You know, I like to see him out there and and like talking to his teammates and like you know, telling them it's about the next play, you know, you, you can do this sort of thing and, and being that guy. And he was doing that. And then there was also, you know, there were a couple of, there was some, you know, nice catches like Jalen Darden made a nice catch. Mm-hmm. Um, 
which, you know, that's it, it's nice to see. He got like a, a 20-odd yard catch to the sideline, which was really nice to see when I think we were struggling. And Gage came really good in that last set of, you know, in that last um, sort of drive. So I think there are positives. I think it's always going to be difficult with those second string, but we, you know, try not to be too negative. And when we've got like a mix of at least one of our lead receivers back in, so Evans back in or, you know, Julio Jones back in or, you know, just one actual lead receiver, I think that make, that will make all the difference to how defences have to play against us. It's a really good point about Darden. He did do really well. And what was nice is after that catch, he stayed in the game. Um, so the coaches clearly have some faith in him. <coughs> Excuse me. I wonder whether it's worth bringing Darden inward a bit. What we seem to be missing is someone in the seam, someone over the middle to give us that width across the field. And I wonder if Darden's small enough that he might be able to sort of just go and get lost behind the linebackers somewhere. Well, you should say that, but I, I've always been a bit of a Cole Beasley fan. I've always thought what a good player he was. When we signed him, I was quite heartened by that because Brady, when he played for the Patriots, always had that type of receiver, didn't he? Like Wes Walker mm. and, and that sort of thing uh, to go in the slot. And I think, uh, I think, Beasley, what, did he, what did somebody say that Brady said that I feel like I've been thrown to this man all my life? And uh, I think I think he's got a part to play in this team. I really do. Yeah, given I think that's all about fitness, isn't it? He only played yeah. very few snaps, but he's not game fit. So, and and what we did see, I think, was positive. He made a couple of good catches, and he like the first catch I think he made, he was kind of reaching for it, and it wasn't an easy catch. You see him mm. kind of get it really on the fingertips. So he he made a really good catch on that first one. So it was like, you know, that's that's a real positive sign to see him coming out, you know, not match fit, but still making catches like that. It felt like uh, some of those plays to Cole w was probably a bit scripted. He probably hasn't got the full playbook down. So I think the plays that went to him, as the game, as the commentators, I think, highlighted, it was always going to him. Yeah. And that's no bad thing. We just maybe need to use that a little bit more situationally and not sort of burn him out in the middle of the, and by the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, it's always going to get better next week when we when, when these come back and well we'll come on to that it's crossed. only the Chiefs they, they can't even beat the Colts so uh, let's, let's go on to the defensive side of the ball which I think we probably all agree was a slightly better proposition Dan what were the highlights for you? Joe uh, Fanshaw he's mm -hmm. actually looking like he, he could play in the NFL routine he got there um, he played a bit part last season and kind of flash and you just want to see a bit more and they listen to go and JPP and you kind of go, well, I hope he can step up into this role, but he, he truly did. Um, I still see a bit more from Gavea. I mean, like, we stopped their run game greatly in the box and that's, that's his ultimate job, but he's doing a job under the radar at the minute, I feel, for Vidavea. Um, But secondary, we had trouble with it all over the field last year. Um, it's just that for up Jamal Dean. Um, Mike Edwards had a good game as well, I thought, to be fair to him. Um, and the guy whose name escapes me, Logan Ryan, that came in from New York at the time, has actually really shown his experience because he's moved from corner back to safety for us. Um, and it, it looks like he's showing well there. Yeah, he seems to be that nickel. And I think I think he's been a difference maker. Mariana, you're nodding. I mean, I, seeing him come across from, from New York, I mean, I've, I've got the, the sort of... the the Below slight down. benefit of, of having seen him play. And I did think he was a big pick, you know, a good pickup when we when we picked him up. And as you say, he's he's playing that sort of nickel position. He's he's doing really well, I think, and and his interception showed. So, you know, I, I think uh, he's a he's an experienced player. Um, where we've got a, a lot of still relatively younger players. So he is an experienced head out there. And and I think he he's fitted straight into the team, which is nice to see. He, of course, he played with Brady, didn't he, at the Patriots as well? And uh, he, 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 he said, didn't he? The guy said in the commentary said that he's he's come straight into the Buccaneers and and sort of like made himself the leader of the secondary, you know, and it showed as well. I think we, you know, we played really, really well. And like I say, uh, Tryon is uh, starting to play the player we we drafted for a you know, first round pick. And uh, I think I said in a previous podcast, people forget that last year he hadn't played for a year and 
He's he's yeah. really started to show the play player he was. But we did miss Hicks, I don't you think, as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. You know, big star. We did Logan Hall for decent plays as well coming in. I was going to say, yeah. yeah, it was really good to see Logan Hall. You know, that sort of top of the second round player, but he he's he's showing. You know, that sort of a lot of people said he was a first round talent, and he was really showing it on on the night. He he got through a couple of times. Yeah, I think like Dan said, you know, when the game threatened to run away and somehow the, the, def- the testament to the defence to keep us in it, you know, right to the very end where we, you know, we, we could have pulled it off and gone into overtime. It was quite incredible, really, because the way we were shaping up, I was, I'd just got one of these big blowouts written all over it, this one. But uh, no, no, I thought the defence was superb. You have to give a lot of credit to probably to Todd Bowles because he his adjustments, whatever he made in terms mm. of the adjustments, and some of it was like not blitzing quite as much. We are generally quite blitz heavy, and he kind of just changed up the looks a bit. And yeah. what what he did worked, and we went from sort of just giving away fourteen points, like and as you say, what looked like was going to be a complete blowout to like stuffing them after that. I love this new formation of three down linemen to the left of the centre with two oh, linebackers okay. standing on the right. And I was I was watching it, like, and one play, I think four of them went back into coverage and another play, they just sent the house. And I think that's probably, that's why you pick off Aaron Rodgers because anytime you intercept him, you're doing something good. And I mean, you just didn't know what was coming next. Mm. Also, guys, what you guys think of dropping Bita Vaya into coverage? <laughs> Obviously, it forced Aaron Jones' <laughs> fumble. <laughs> and, uh, I'm not sure he's got a lot of that in his locker, a bit of air, to, to drop back into coverage. But it worked. It's going to be a small zone, whatever it is. <laughs> I think that's why no one picked, the, like the, even the commentary team didn't pick it was Vaya because they weren't expecting yeah. him to come across from that position. It was like, Vaya? Where's it? He's not supposed to be there. I think they said it was known as Rochers originally, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've seen two plays of it though. One was the fumble, and there's another play where he dropped in and he's passed over his head and he's just stood there in the field with nobody within 15 yards of him, kind of just stood there looking around. So that one didn't quite work out quite so well. So, <laughs> what about the linebackers though? I think, you know, I, I still think it's the best back four in the NFL. I'm really amazed that um, Shaq Barrett's standard of play, not because he's not a good player, but he just seems to be ageless. Oh, Superb, absolutely superb, and also led by led by David, who I I still have said to be the most underrated player for years in the NFL. Uh, never gets the recognition he, survived, he he deserves, and um, and Devin White is playing like the Devin White of uh, of a lot, not last year, the year before, because he it, they are they were superb, you know. The, the defense has has kept us in. Is kept us in the games all season, you know. Hmm. We're just waiting for the offense to actually kick themselves into gear, and, we're, we're, and then we're, we're off on a bit of a run, I think. They do, Dan, they do say, don't they, that sort of defenses they can sort of warm up a little bit quicker in the year because they're sort of yeah. to yeah. some extent reacting, yeah. whereas an offense easy, you know, right? needs to see not the ball, defeat itself. Ball, basically, yeah, mm. yeah. Do you so, see the ball and go get the ball. on a scale of oopsie to ah, kind of how worried are you about our bucks at the moment? I'm not sure whether Oopsie's or R's high or low. No, Oopsie's uh, low. That's <laughs> <interesting>. ah, <laughs> is up there. Are you more of a... How am I? I'm genuinely not right at all. I, you look at the schedule, the first three games, we'd have all took probably being two and one through the first three games, regardless <laughs> of how they fell about. Uh, we've kept ourselves in games against some very good offences. The defence is held up. I'd like to see us do more, but I genuinely believe we had three, our three starting wide receivers did not play in that game uh, at all, not a snap. So, no, and Brady has got that relationship with Evans and women. So if we talk about the time and the intricacies and all of that lot coming, he has that already in his locker. So I, I don't mind it at all. Uh, I'm not concerned. Um, we've got, okay, we've got the Chiefs now in a couple of tough, uh, easier looking games to follow from next. So, I'm not concerned on the season. We win our division games. We win the division. It's as that. Here, so we but before we go, we've got there. we've got one final third of the team to talk about. Mariana knows what I mean. Special teams were quite special. How how did, you know? 
Tell, t- take me through it. It was great, wasn't it? I mean, just solid, really. Um, I don't think they put a, a foot wrong. Some some absolute booming punts from Kamada. He's got a leg on him. Um, like some of those, like almost from our goal line, and he like was hoofing them right down the the field. So I I do like the 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 look of Kamada, but you know we just we did a job as usual. We've not seen anything amazing in terms of runbacks. We still await that that ninety nine yard, you know, end zone to end zone sort of run back. We we await that day, but no solid solid game, and, you know. Suck up did what he had to when he had to. I desperately want someone cleverer than me to come up with a pun for Jake Kamada, something like yeah, sort of booming kicks of the Spanish Kamada or something like that. <laughs> I feel like it needs to he needs to start to get a bit of a nickname. Phil, I mean, suck up, he, he was pretty solid as well, wasn't he? Yes, he, he's he's uh, he's back to being he had a, bit of a wobble last season, but he's back to being that reliable kicker uh, that we all we all sort of got to know, which is quite a novelty for the Buccaneers, let's be quite honest, mm-hmm. having a consistent kicker, but going to Kamada, it's the hang time of his punts as well, isn't it? I think there was one where the, the, where the receiver was looking up in the air thinking, where, where has he gone? You know, it, it was tremendous, you know, absolutely tremendous. And Man, I've got to say, nodding and smiling, you agree with that? Yeah, everybody can hit the video on in Dallas is, is a clear mm. fan favourite straight out of the gate, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But you got to, can I just say I mentioned for that hit that Neil put on that that uh, Packers player? You, oh dear me! I can feel it now. <laughs> yeah, it did feel good. I, I feel like if I, I'm don't get me wrong, special teams A minus, absolutely brilliant. There's a couple of times where Kamada did outkick his coverage. Now that's there's nothing that's that's not his fault. I don't think. I think that means we need to get the gunners down there quicker. And it did feel like. We didn't have Darden had one good pump return. I can't remember, was it 15 yards, something like that, where he had blockers. And on a, a lot of the time, I think actually Darden's on an island. Um, and I do I do think we all need to see why maybe even Miller out there feels like Miller's route to redemption might be on special teams if Darden's gonna come in and maybe he step can't in catch and receive. Though. <laughs> I mean, a minor drawback catch is kind of essential for a return. Yeah, that's a bit picky that down if you don't mind. <laughs> Move it on a stick you want. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> Miller's uh, Miller's definitely, I think, uh, in 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 a bit of trouble. I would say he's he's not he's not done anything in the last two games to really uh, endear himself to 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 the fans or to I'm sure Brady or the coaching squad it, it just too many mistakes I think from Miller um I think he he's going to soon be looking at his last chance with the, particularly with us bringing in uh, as you say Cole Beasley and and Jalen Darden stepping up you know with he may well find himself dropping way back I think Scotty Miller I think there's a few people said again, you know, why did we keep him instead of Tyler Johnson after the preseason? Because Tyler Johnson was at least catching stuff. Hard, yeah, it's hard to know what the decisions are and what was being valued over what. Okay, and then it's time for your views, our members. Uh, Michael Casey, our first four games were always going to be tough. Hopefully, we can get to three and one. But offensively, we're going to have to vastly improve. We can move the ball, and upping the tempo seems to get us into a better rhythm. Yeah, actually, that good point about going to the sort of semi no huddle um, really did g things along. Um, everyone's favourite trolley dolly, Andy Harwood. What a tough watch that was. First and last drives were okay, but not too much in between, except for frustration on offence. I know we all predicted a tough start to the season, but to lose in that fashion when the D was so effective, we really lost it rather than Green Bay winning it. That's a, an interesting way to call it. And finally, from Gary Willard, last year's players not playing versus Green Bay. Evans, Godwin, Brown, Gronk, Jensen, Rojo, Marpet, Kappa, OJ and Smith. It's not difficult to see why we've had offensive struggles in our opening game so far this season. Asking a lot to expect the O to click early on in the season. Yeah, absolutely agree with that. Yeah. Okay, so we'll call it there in terms of looking at the Packers. Um, For you guys at home, um, remembering that if you're a Bucks UK member, you've got the 9th of October social coming up in London. 
You've got the 6th of November social coming up in Birmingham, where we're going to be recording a live podcast with Gene from Buck What You Heard. Uh, and I think there's some prizes and things to be given away. So if you haven't already got your tickets for those, do get your tickets for those. If not, or, you're, or it's another game, make sure you join us on the forum. There were something crazy like 700 posts, and I wasn't even around for most of the game. Normally, they're all me. Uh, but no, it was a fantastic uh, bit of chat going on during the game on the forum, so make sure you join in. Um, and as usual, thanks to Bucks Report for uh, our partnership with them and their help in promoting uh, the stuff that we do. Um, so we'll look ahead now to the Chiefs, who obviously lost to the, the Colts, <laughs> um, which is fantastic. Um but before we come on to looking at the Chiefs specifically, we've got that magic wand moment. So we've talked about our bucks from the Packers. If you've got your magic wand, you're going to wave it. What's the one thing you're going to work on or fix um, in the week ahead ahead of um, that game? Mariana, do you want to go first? Um, I'm going to wave my wand on the run game, and I'm going to say let's see a bit more, a bit you know, uh, not just Lenny, and a bit more you know, change up in, in what we're doing in our own game. And as you say, maybe like the, the sort of not quite run sort of the, the sort of screen pass sort of dump off stuff as well, sort of included in that. But that's, that's where my, my magic wand's going on the, on the run game. Okay. Dan. Uh, Chris Godwin's hamstring or Julio Jones' knee. I'll take either at this stage. Put so you're playing a sort of like game of operation or, with your tweezers. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, either or okay. both would be either delightful. <laughs> so, player back to help Phil. Uh, I just like our coaches to come up with something a bit different, to be quite honest. I mean, I know we tried that trick player, probably we're never going to try one ever again after the disaster that was. <laughs> but I just, we just, I just thought we were a bit too predictable on Sunday what we were going to do. And I just like to start, uh, you know, by our left, which is just thinking about it a bit more, to be quite honest. I just, uh, didn't think we should have enough imagination sometimes. I think you're right. For years and years and years, we've played the Saints. We've always said, you know, we hate their coaches, obviously, but Peyton is the best, at, was, was the best, at scheming his receivers open. No matter who was on the depth chart, yeah. they'd be mm. catching it in acres of space. We mm. just don't seem to have that. It's always contested no. when it's guys to us. So some, some magic there, I think, would be really good. So looking ahead to the Chiefs, this is not the Chiefs, of your uh, of, of Super Bowl days, it's, it's a different set of players now. Dan, kind of who who are the names that we need to look for? Do you think? What for the Chiefs? Yeah, for the Chiefs. Mahomes, Travis Kelsey. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Usual suspects. They're like they, they look on paper thin at receiver. They've been delivering results. Edwards Alaire stepped up uh, and done amazingly so far through. For the early part of the season. Um, but in all honesty, if Mahomes and Kelsey turn up and play how they can and deal with that, they'll give any game team, any team a game on their day anyway. And Mariana? They've got the, the weapons. Maybe on the other side of the ball, I think it's a bit harder to probably pinpoint people, but they seem to be, again, a solid unit. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think now. You've probably put me on the spot there, but. Um... You know, they look. They they had a bad game against the Colts, but they're they're still not a bad team. Um, and much like us looking at the one bad game against you know against the Packers, they 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 weren't a million miles off. You know, that wasn't like oh we got absolutely blown out either. So, you know, it's it's not like we're looking at a team that is going to to get blown out. I think we've just got to <coughs> we we've beaten. Um, the Chiefs, we know how to beat them. We know that we've got to contain Mahomes and that we can't let him, you know, get out of the pocket and we've, we've got to contain him. Um, I think defensively for us, I think the, the main issue is going to be on, on the O-line still. I mean, anyone watching, um, I think it was Walton who was playing at that left tackle position you know, we're we're so far down on that side. What what is he like? Third string, fourth string? He's like way down the chart. So, 
Um, I think we like let's put another tight end out there. Let's let's give him some help. Let's not leave him because he's he's not a player with experience and and stuff. So I think maybe let's put a bit of help so that we're not because there were a few times that players were getting through to Brady coming through that left tackle position. So let's put some help out there for him and, and make sure that we can keep Brady upright. Bill, do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, I do. But that, that I think that's the crucial part of the game, actually. I think the Kansas City defence is very underrated, to be quite honest, and it has been for a very, very long time. And unless we start giving Brady some protection on Sunday, I think we could be in a bit of trouble with that defence. They are very, very quick, very quick. And we'll need the defensive line, to, uh, offensive line, sorry, to actually stand up. But on, on the offensive side of the ball, <coughs> they're not the same team. You know, they've, they've lost Tyreek Hill, and um, that's a huge, huge uh, loss to them. Um, and they, they're still coming to terms with that, as far as I can see. Uh, but like, like Dan said, Travis Kelsey is always going to be a threat. Uh, but after him, um, there's still yeah, you've got Juju uh, Smith-Schuster and Mark Westmalder yeah. Scantling. But I think that, you know that, you need rotation in the NFL. As soon as any mm. one of Travis Valdez Scantling or Smith-Schuster goes off the field, that defense, I think the offense drops a couple of grades. Yeah, there is there isn't the you know the same with Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I think Rojo's Rojo's something like fourth or fifth on the depth chart. He's still there, um, mm. you know. So I think it falls off quite quickly. Yes, no doubt about that. You know, they've got, got a good running game. They've, they've also uh, signed quite a good rookie, Perceiver, I think. He's, he has, he's been playing every now and again, but he's a, he's a, good, he's a good player in college. So I think, I think he always, <coughs> might see a bit more of him. Is that um, Sky Moore you mean? <laughs> Sky Moore of minus two points in fantasy, uh, I'd yeah, like to point out. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I, just dro- I dropped yeah, him this week, running back. so... <laughs> <laughs> he was, yeah, I had high expectations for him. Very Do you know yes. Hell Harden as well? His name we haven't mentioned, but he's been in the middle of the and he, he does tag against us. And I think we will blitz a lot um, at the weekend. Double team Kelsey, and we'll blitz early. They try to make an early pass because that will stop MVS and Hardman getting deep, which is their strength. So I think we'll try and force those under throws. Double team Kelsey um, and let him try and pick off Juju and get to the ball after that early. Yeah, presumably David would be picking up Kelsey, and he did really well in the Super Bowl against him. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, he did. No. Yeah, mm. got to see if we can get Mahomes arguing with his coaches by half time again. You know, we'll be we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Yeah, I, yeah. I, what, the thing is, though, I will say one thing about the Colts. The Colts are a much better team than pick, get, the people giving them credit for. Be quite honest. The, you know, the, they've been flying under the. I thought they were flying under the radar a bit last season, but they're definitely flying under the radar this season. I think they're a good team. Is this is this is this week with the Chiefs? Is it going to be a high scoring shootout? Is it going to be a low scoring grapple? What do you have? have what's the pacing of this game? Do you think? It just depends who's playing at wide receiver for us. Mm. <laughs> That's yeah, I feel the like... quite a dance. I think you know Mikey will be back. Yeah, I feel well, like I'm going to get that one wrong. I feel like it's. I feel like our games at the moment, just because of the way our defence have been playing, they're all going to be these low-scoring sort of grind it out um, games. As you say, it will depend what happens in terms of our offence and if we can click and actually get the ball moving. But certainly, I, I'm well. I hope it will be low-scoring on their side. I think it, it's a different defence to who met them in the in the Super Bowl, as you say, and, and this time. Yeah, we've still got Shaq Barrett, but we don't have JPP. So I think it's going to be really important for try and Shainka again and, and Hall, who, as we said, in, in the Packers game, stepped up and really played quite well. They're going to have to really, you know, step up for this game as well. I think this this one could really be one that sort of uh, Shainka could really shine in or he could, you know, just go missing. So it'll be interesting to see how he comes out and plays uh, on... Uh, on Sunday night, don't, don't you think I, I think our, our defense is probably uh, as good as the one that won in the Super Bowl? Now, I really do. I think they've got some good young players coming through. But you know, I just hope. Well, Hicks is out for four weeks, isn't he? Um, he's he's. I think he's been a tremendous addition, and I just think uh, I I agree with you. We a lot of blitzing, and I 
I think I think we're going to win on Sunday. I think we're going to win easy, but it all depends on what Dan, like Dan said. Who's going to turn up at wide receiver? But you say it's, you're right. We're, we're it's a younger defense, and I think that's where Mahomes is good. So if it's a pump fake, if it's a screen pass, if it's a quarterback draw, if we need to make sure that we're not just like yeah, you know, JTS is great, but he seems to be a little bit like that sort of yappy golden retriever. Go the ball, get the ball, get the ball, get the ball. <laughs> and like you, you need to stay in your lane and have the the contain and all that sort of discipline. It, it no one player is going to win the game for us on D. It needs wow. to be a team effort, otherwise it will all go wrong. Dan, we'll start to think. So score predictions. Then I'm going to put you all all on the line. You've got to tell me how you think this is going to end up. We'll start with you, Dan. I think it's going to be low scoring. I hate it being low scoring. I think that maybe suits us a little bit more than the Chiefs. So if the Chiefs are old, I guess uh, both teams are going to be in it. Can I be pessimistic here or do I have to be optimistic? Yeah, you can tell us the truth. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to live free. I don't know. Uh, 26 23, something like that. Okay, so that's that's a, a good middle of the road result. Sorry, that's okay, Mariana. I'm 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 leaning towards Dan's pessimistic um, sort of view. <laughs> I really am. That. Unfortunately, this is I think this is one that like preseason I did think was going to be a bit of a banana skin for us. I thought we were going to find it difficult. Um, certainly having come off the games we've come off of and it being a, a sort of late not and now with all the hurricane stuff as well that's going on and we're not practicing at home and there's all that disruption as well is that and we don't even know where we're playing the game yet right we we might didn't someone bandy about chilly. yeah <laughs> and so um i think with all that oh. affecting us I, oh, i'm a bit i'm a bit pessimistic um I'm going to go for a close one. I'm going to go for. Uh, I'm, I, I can't. I'm going to have to say that the Bucks win, but it's like 17 14 and it's a, a, a suck up kick at the end. That's, that that's actually the, the same line. score I was going to go for, but I think the 17 14, I think it comes down to whoever has the ball last will win. Yeah. But I think clock management could be important there. Phil? I'm going for a bit more optimistic than everybody else. I think about 24-14, to be quite honest. Yeah, 24-14, I think we're going to go for. And you know, when you said 17-14, are you not saying that you, you think they're going to win? We're going to win, are you? I think if we can manage the ball and manage the clock and manage the field and get the ball, yes. You, you saw what happened in the last game. Two-point mm. conversion, and I think we go into overtime with all the momentum, and I think we win that game. Yeah. Oh, yeah, go, I, I just think... And that's with an anemic offence. Yeah. I th- I honestly think just very... I think the Packers are better than the Chiefs. Yes, I do. I do as well. I, you have to remember, if Perry really caught that ball at the towards the end of the first half, mm. I think we'd have scored a touchdown. I think we'd have gone and beat the Packers, to be quite honest, even the way we were playing. So, yeah, I think we'll beat the Chiefs quite easily. It's nice to see you back on the positive side, though, Kieran, after the, <laughs> after the prediction programme. I mean, anyway. Well, it's Captain Reverso. I'm worried about whatever I say. That doesn't yeah. happen anyway. Yeah, so. well, somebody called you Gypsy Rose Higher, but there's somebody called <laughs> Indeed. Well, but of course, your opinions count too. So tell us what you think and uh, stick it in the comments below and, uh, and tell us what you think. So but otherwise, um, Mariana, Phil and Dan, thank you all very much. Thank you. And uh, thank you guys all at home as watching. And as ever, we end with a hearty Go Bucks! Go Bucks! Go Bucks!